Did you know that your mount has natural backlash in the gearing? And that backlash can either work for you or work against you. And that's where balancing comes in. In fact, balancing is more than just having it stable in a horizontal position. The direction that you have it favor and how much you have it favor that direction matters. In fact, the direction that you have it favor is what allows you to work with the backlash resulting in better image quality rather than the backlash working against you hurting your image quality and how much you have it favor that direction can actually prolong the life of your equipment by helping to reduce wear and tear on your motors and gearing. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And in the last video, we learned how to properly set up your equipment, both safely and properly, and we left off with balance. And that's what today's video is all about, is how to properly balance your setup, because as you'll see, it's more than just let it go and it not fall one way or the other. It goes a little bit deeper than that. And as you'll see as well, the purpose of balance is so you make proper use of the backlash in the gears so that then you don't have jittery tracking and guiding and that you have the smoothest possible. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we've covered a lot of information in this channel so far, and I don't want you to miss out on any information coming up. We got a lot more to cover. So let's head over to the telescope and let's check out how to properly balance. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you a quick explanation so you know why we're doing what we're doing. If you take a look at this image here, backlash is the spacing between the teeth of a gear. And that needs to be there because if those gears were flush up against each other, they would literally tear themselves apart. Now, when you're balancing your telescope, if you balance it west heavy, that means that the west side of the scope is heavier than the east side of the scope, causing the backlash to actually be on the east side. Now, the telescope rotates from east to west, and if you have it balanced this way, the rotation of your scope is actually done by the weight of the telescope, meaning the amount of weight that you put on the west side to make it west heavy is all that's rotating that scope. So any imperfections in rotation, such as stiction in your mount, wind, things like that, will actually cause the scope to stop for a brief second, or I should say a fraction of a second, but because the backlash is on the east side, your motors are still rotating, so it actually has to catch up to that gear to start rotating again. And then once it unsticks, then it'll fall back into where it needs to be as far as taking up the backlash. Backlash is basically lost motion. Now, that, what I just described, causes jittery tracking and jittery guiding, thus reduced image quality. Now, if you have your telescope balanced east heavy, now the backlash is on the west side. And because the telescope rotates from east to west, it's in constant contact with the gears. So your rotation is actually done by the motors instead of the weight of the scope. So now Things like wind and stiction in your mount are reduced or eliminated because the weight of the scope is on the east side, causing the gears to be in constant contact with each other, taking backlash out of the equation, resulting in much better tracking and guiding, thus much better image quality. Now, each mount is different. 
even if you're talking the same brand, same model, they each have their own personality. And that's okay. That just means that you have to play a little bit with how east or west heavy or nose or tail heavy you go to get your mount to have its best performance possible. I'm going to show you the basics of what you're going to do. You just need to match it up to your mount's personality. But be careful because you don't want to put too much weight on one side because that can actually harm your mount. By having too much weight on one side is putting excess strain on your gearing and motors. So just be careful. Make little adjustments at a time until you have it dialed in. Now let's head over to the telescope and get started. Now, balancing this setup can be a little bit tricky. You'll hear terms like east heavy, west heavy, nose heavy, tail heavy, but what does it all mean? Now, this right here is now facing north, which would then mean that's east, that's west. Let's start with east heavy and west heavy. So I'm going to unlock RA. I'm going to move this down, okay? East heavy means this, the east side, is heavier than the west side. Now, if I let this go, you're going to notice how that's falling pretty heavily to the west, okay? Now, that's not good, okay? Proper balance gives you the best possible tracking and the best possible guiding. Now, why is that? Let's go ahead and lock this for a second. Your um, RA and declination have worm gears, okay? Uh, and gears, as you know, have teeth. And those teeth have what's called backlash, which is spacing between the teeth when they contact each other. That backlash needs to be there to keep those gears from eating themselves alive. Now, as your telescope is tracking, okay, let's pretend that it's tracking this way, okay, um, if you're balanced way too far off, what's going to happen is it's going to be exaggerated. It's going to push and then stop and then push and then stop and then push and then stop, okay? So the purpose of having it east heavy or west heavy and they say east heavy because your telescope's tracking from east to west. And the purpose of having it east heavy is so the weight is then resting on those gears, thus allowing a smooth track, okay? Now, your mount and your mount behavior is going to heavily depend on how you balance this out. I'll give you an example. This setup right here, I can have pretty well balanced and be fine. My AVX, I need to have a little bit more uh, unbalanced, we'll say, to have the best possible tracking and guiding. So what I do, how I start this off, I'll actually balance mine very slightly west heavy. And the reason is, is again, uh, if you've seen uh, my polar alignment video, my house is in the way in the east. So I can't really get a target until about 45, 40 degrees. So I'm already pretty far up in the, uh, in the sky. So I'm hitting meridian flip pretty quickly. Now, balancing it a little bit west heavy uh, means that when I flip meridian, I am now east heavy, which is going to take a majority of the rest of my imaging session. And I get very good luck with that. Again, these things all have different personalities. So you just need to learn yours and you'll get it dialed in. So the first thing I'm going to do, we already know this is pretty west heavy. Okay. We're going to take our counterweights. We're going to start moving them. Okay. 
bring that right there for just a minute. There we go, right? We're balanced, it's no longer falling. No, that's not how that works, okay? What we're gonna do, always use the same amount of tension as you're going. And you'll actually feel this right here is a lot heavier than this right here. I'm giving just a little bit of a nudge. See how it just immediately stops, right? And you have that same little nudge. You see how it has a little bit of travel left, right? This right here is about how I would balance my AVX. That right there is about how I would balance that. I'd be happy with that. This guy right here, though, likes to be a little bit more in balance than that. See how that almost immediately stops. Almost immediately stops. Okay. This is how this one likes to be balanced. You can get a pretty even balance on this setup and it does very well with it. Whereas the AVX wants to be more out of balance. And that's how I get my best guiding and tracking with that. Now, let's talk nose heavy, tail heavy. You want a straight line, lock your RA, and then we're gonna come around and we're going to unlock declination. This is the nose, this is the tail. Tail is back of the OTA, nose is front of the OTA. We're gonna do basically the same thing. See, just a little bit of tension and it stops, a little bit of tension up, how it just keeps on going back, right? Now in my previous video setting up, I already know where I need to be on this particular setup in order to be balanced in declination. And that is the mounting screw from the saddle plate onto the front uh, tube ring is just slightly off of my declination housing. And this actually right here, being quite tail heavy, gives me my best guiding and tracking uh, as far as declination is concerned, right? How do you adjust this? So as you saw, RA is adjusted through your counterweights. This right here is adjusted one of two ways. The first way and the ideal way is going to be loosening these up. Never loosen these up with it like this. You want the RA to be straight up and down when you loosen this. So you would end up loosening up your uh, saddle and scooting this forward or backward to adjust the balance of this. Let's say you don't have enough room doing that and you still can't get it in balance, okay? The next thing that you would do, I'm gonna scoop this around so you can see without hitting my camera on the mount. These right here are going to loosen your tube rings around your OTA and you would slide your OTA forward or backward in your tube rings and then fine tune your adjustment with your saddle. That's how you would adjust your declination. And again, just like on right ascension, finding the ideal balance for your mount's personality, you would just find your ideal balance for your mount's personality when it comes to declination. Now, general rule of thumb, I would start, if you're just learning, I would start with a very slight tail heavy balance. And we always say tail heavy because nine times out of 10, your declination is gonna give you the most trouble. And having it tail heavy is going to put the backlash in the correct location for the smoothest possible rotation in declination. 
So I would start with a very slight tail heavy, uh, less than this. Start small and work your way up until you find that ideal spot to have that guiding and tracking that you're looking for. So I hope that this helped. Do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon, make sure to subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section and then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.